All right, for this video, I want to cover the IRS Form 8812 to claim the child tax credit for 2023. So in this example here, we're going to look at a taxpayer filing as head of household, and she has two qualifying children. So we'll look at uh, how having more than one child uh, impacts the CTC computation. So we've got the 8812 here, and it is part of her full return, so we'll go through the 1040 and all the pieces that she needs to have completed. And then I do have one slide here covering some background on the child tax credit for this year and then more details on the sample fact pattern that we're gonna be looking at. So this is the CTC for tax year 2023. So this is returns that are being filed in 2024. So the credit for this year is $2,000 per child and the child has to be under 17 at the end of the year. So what that means is that if your child turns 17 on the last day of the year, let's say their 17th birthday is December 31, 2023, they are no longer eligible, right? They have to be under 17 all the way through the end of the year. Now the credit is $2,000 and the additional child tax credit is the refundable portion of that CTC. And so we'll you see in this example how the child tax credit for our taxpayer here eliminates all of her tax and then she separately computes the refundable portion of that CTC. Now the maximum, uh, sorry, maximum refundable portion for this year is $1,600 and that's up 100 bucks from last year. Now here are some pending changes to kind of keep track of for this year as it could impact this computation. So there is a bill uh, pending in Washington there, HR 7024, and this act is trying to modify some of these amounts, and it's in our favor, right? So it's in the taxpayer's favor if this bill were to be passed. And so one of the things that's unique is if these changes are made, they could be retroactive to 2023. And so one of the biggest changes is the increase in the refundable portion. So $1,600 is the refundable portion as of now, but they're thinking of increasing it to 1,800 retroactive to 2023. And they're also changing how we calculate the maximum refundable amount. So uh, we'll get a closer look at this when we actually look at the 8812. I'll go through how this computation looks on the form. But under the current law, the maximum refundable amount is 15% of your earned income over $2,500. That's it, that's the maximum uh, that could be refundable. And the proposed change to the, the, the calculation would be take that same 15% of income over 2,500, but then you can multiply it by the number of qualifying children. So that would greatly increase the ceiling on this refundable piece. Now, the bill does have this section 105, uh, which provides that if you file and you receive your child tax credit and then at a later date the bill is passed and it's made retroactive, the IRS is supposed to be uh, automatically adjusting your return and then they'll send you a check for the difference, right? That's, that's presumably how it's supposed to work. Uh, nothing's perfect, so if you find that you're trapped in this space where it is passed and they don't send you your money, you likely you're going to have to file an amended tax return. All right. Now, as far as phase outs, the total child tax credit is reduced by $50 uh, for every 1000 that your AGI exceeds the threshold. And so the way the math would work out here is if your income is 40000 or more over that threshold, it wipes out the full $2,000 of child tax credits. But fortunately, the thresholds are pretty high. So married filing joint taxpayers, you get a full credit so long as your AGI is under 400,000. And then for single and head of household taxpayers, you'll get a full credit so long as your AGI is under 200K. All right, so let's have a look at our taxpayer here. We have Emily, uh, she's filing as head of household and she has two children that live with her on a full-time basis. So her son Brian is five and daughter Sarah is nine. And so she's gonna be claiming both of them as dependents and nobody else can claim her as a, a claim those children as a dependent. So both kids are dependents, both kids are under 17 at the end of the year. 
And so she's going to be eligible to claim the CTC on both of them as qualifying children. Now her income is $50,600 in wages and she has some investment income of $54. All right, so let's have a look at the return uh, and then we'll go through the 1040 and then the 8812 and all the worksheets. So uh, we've got Emily's 1040 here. She's filing as head of household and she has listed her children here as dependents and then also noted in box four that she's going to be claiming uh, the child tax credit for each, right? So each child meets the requirements of uh, a, a qualifying child for CTC purposes. And so she's checked the appropriate box there. We can see her wages, 50,600, and then her investment income down here on lines 2B and 3B of $12 for interest and 42 for dividends. So she's claiming the standard deduction for HOH filers that's 20,800 for the year. So with that net taxable income, her tax is 3,265. Now, this is her tax liability based on her taxable income. This is not an indication of how much she has to pay yet <clears throat> or um, you know what or how her refund is going to be impacted. All of those elements are computed down here. So think of it as this is her taxable income this is her tax liability and now we start calculating well how many credits can she claim against that what's her withholding and so how does that ultimately drive the amount of uh, refund she gets or the tax that she might owe right depending on your circumstances so in this return emily is also going to be eligible for the earned income tax credit so you can see we've calculated here on line 27. i won't cover it in this video we'll just focus on the child tax credit but there is a separate video posted where we go into that eic calculation for her so we're going to go straight to the 8812 and look at how we calculate the ctc for emily uh, for 2023. so at the top here the starting point is her adjusted gross income. So that's line 11 of her 1040, and that's $50,654. Uh, $50, now, there are adjustments here. If you're claiming the foreign earned income exclusion, right, on 2555, or if you have income in Puerto Rico that's being excluded, you want to uh, back those amounts out. Uh, in, in her case, none of those apply, right? She's a full time resident of Florida. Uh, doesn't live abroad, doesn't travel to Puerto Rico, not, nothing like that applies to her. So the uh, net AGI, modified AGI that is, is simply just the same, the $50,654. Now, on line four, the number of qualifying children under 17 uh, and that also have a valid SSN. So she's got two. Uh, the Social Security number, very important. Uh, if you have a child born during the tax year and they've yet to have their SSN assigned, you need to extend your tax return and wait till that is assigned. If you file uh, without a valid Social Security number, it's going to be rejected. All right, the IRS is not going to process it. So we've got two qualifying children times $2,000 per child. So four hundred, uh, sorry, four thousand dollars of eligible credit is potentially available here. Now line six doesn't apply to us. We don't have any other dependents, no other children without SSNs. So line seven, multiply line six by 500, that's zero for us. So the total amount of credit we're working with here is $4,000. Now um, questions nine and 10, we have to test against those AGI thresholds, right? So enter the amount based on our filing status, we are head of household, so we're $200,000 is the limit, right? So again, what we're after here is, is our income gonna be under that 200,000? If not, then we have to worry about the phase outs, right? So subtract line nine from line three. So line nine of 200,000 from line three of 5654 gives us a negative number, which is just reported as zero. So now we don't have to calculate line 11 where we would have a potential phase out. If her income on line three was, let's say $210,000, then we would have $10,000 excess and we, we would have a phase out for the credit. But in this case, her income's under that, so we don't have to worry about it. So line 12, 
is the amount on line 8 more than the amount on line 11? So is the amount on 8 more than 11? The answer is yes. So we check the yes box, subtract line 11 from line 8, and then enter the result. Now the result, so line 11 from line 8, $4,000, the result is first inputted on the credit limit worksheet. So what, is that, what does this mean? Well, the child tax credit is initially a non-refundable credit. So it means you claim the credit against any kind of tax you have, right? So it eliminates that tax dollar for dollar, but then an excess needs to be tested against the additional child tax credit rules. So if we look at the credit limit worksheet uh, for uh, Emily here, so the credit limit worksheet effectively looks at how much tax do we owe. So enter the amount uh, from Form 1040 in line 18. So if we go back to our Form 1040, line 18 is the total amount of tax up here, $3,265. We add any other applicable amounts from Schedule 3 if we have any. In this case, she doesn't. Uh, so what we simply have here is that $3,265 of tax, we can apply of that $4,000 of CTC up to $3,265, and then we have excess that is potentially additional child tax credit. So $3,265 is going to be the credit Right, so this is the child tax credit that's reported on Form 1040, line 19. All right, so 3,265 is reported up here on line 19. We can see child tax credit or credit for other dependents from 8812. So the 3,265 uh, offsets are taxed completely, and so now our net total tax, uh, based on this return example, is zero dollars. So We've eliminated the tax. Now the question is how much can we get that's refundable uh, from that additional child tax credit? If we go back to the 8812, page 2, part 2 dash A is the additional child tax credit, so the ACTC for all filers. So on line 16A, we want to subtract line 14 from 12. So if we go back up here, Line 14, 3265, this is what we've used. Subtract it from line 12, the total eligible amount that we had, which gives us a difference of $735. So $735, think of this as kind of that extra or that excess that could potentially be used. So 16B, the number of qualifying children under 17, we have two, times 16 gives us $3,200. Now remember on the slide when we looked at HR 7024, what they're trying to do is increase the ACT scene limit from $1,600 to $1,800. So if we're looking at the 8812 here, this is what they're trying to change. They're trying to increase the potential limit uh, for which we can claim uh, any kind of this excess additional child tax credit. So line 17, it asks us to enter the smaller of line 16A or 16B. We've got 16A is the smaller amount, so $735. Now the second test here is that overall limit to 15% of excess over 2,500. So line 18A, we have our earned income here. Earned income doesn't include that investment income, so it's just the $50,600 or W-2 income. And then line 19, we have, is the amount on 18A more than 2,500? Yes, right, so our wages are more than 2,500. So line 19, we subtract out the 2,500 and we get $48,100. Now the limit here, 15% of the excess, so we take 48,100 times 15% and it gives us 7,215. So this is the next kind of test for uh, the cap as which we can claim the additional child tax credit. This is also something they're trying to change with that HR 7024 bill. What they would want to do is have the same 15% calculation, but then you would take 7215 times the number of qualifying children, and that would create a greater limit here for you as well. And so 
uh, this would also help a lot of taxpayers that had a lot of kids uh, because they often get kind of stopped out with this overall limit here. All right, so now uh, we've multiplied that through. Line 16 is the amount 4,800 or more on line 16B. Well, we have 3,200, so it's not more than 4,800. So we check the box for no. Now it asks, if we're a bona fide resident of Puerto Rico, go to 21. Otherwise, skip 2B and enter the smaller of line 17 or line 20 on line 27. So we're looking at the smaller of uh, line 17 or line 20. Line 17 is 735. Line 20 is 7200. So the smaller one is 735 here. And we enter that at the very bottom on line 27. So this is the amount of additional child tax credit available to Emily. So she takes the 735, goes back to page 2 over 1040, and reports that on line 28. So the additional child tax credit from 8812 is $735. So effectively, uh, with two qualifying children, $2,000 each, she is getting the full $4,000 credit, right? She's getting the $3,265 that's reported up here as a CTC, and she's getting a refundable piece of $735, so she is getting her full $4,000, it's just being separately reported as a non-refundable credit and a refundable credit. All right. Okay, so that covers it for the, this tutorial. Uh, again, I also have one covering the earned income credit, so go ahead and check out that as well if you want to see how we calculate that for her based on this uh, scenario. And as always, I look forward to seeing you again on the next video. Thank you.